I really believe that you are what you read. And so today I'm going to take you for a little bit of a whirlwind tour of my library here. And it's um, not all of my books, but a lot of my books and most of them are language based. In the future, I plan to go through different books, some of my favorites, and pull out lessons that I've learned from them, and I'll share them with you. But first things first, let's take a look at what I've got here. So I guess the best place to start is this corner here. What I've done is set most of my dictionaries on top here. So you can see we start, we've got, now I've ordered them <laughs> in uh, no sort of academic sense here. It's mainly because of size and the aesthetics of it sitting in the lounge room. But here we have Thai, Sanskrit, Malay. Um, this is actually a really interesting dictionary here. Um, this dictionary is Northern Thai. It was a project that was done several years ago and um, you can see the script there it looks very similar to Burmese. It's the um, traditional Northern Thai script. It's the uh, Lana script. Uh, we have Visayan, Seven Language Dictionary. This is another gem that I picked up. It's a Chinese Pali uh, Thai dictionary that I found in a secondhand bookstore at Union Mall in uh, Bangkok. Uh, we have an Arabic Thai, um, the the old Indonesian dictionaries, Kamus Bahasa Daerah. This is uh, great. I've been able to do some good comparisons between Javanese, Balinese, Sunda, and Madura, Bahasa Madura. Um, we have some Chinese dictionaries there coming through Kamus uh, Linguistics. So this is a an Indonesian dictionary of linguistics, uh, Telugu, different Indian languages. Hindi, Spanish, Chinese, more Spanish. Uh, I've got two copies of this and this is actually not a bad dictionary now. The only catch is that um, it's Vietnamese Thai so you have to be able to read Thai to do it but the, the um, words, the glossaries, the sentences in this dictionary here are actually pretty good. Um, if we come down, we've got Thai, more Thai dictionaries, Danish, Lao, Chinese, more Chinese. These two are fantastic. Uh, you can see they've had a lot of use. This is a dictionary of English Thai idioms. And um, Ted Stratlow has actually passed away um, many years ago. But uh, what he's done has gone into um, ancient text, magazines, and uh, all different types of media and pulled out um, Thai idioms. Now some of them aren't what you would think an idiom is, but it's really, really uh, good to show everyday Thai language and the colorful idiomatic language. Okay, so we've got more Chinese, Hindi, Greek, uh, Latin. That there is my um, consonant compass, which I'll be doing a uh, piece on very shortly for you. And coming down, the abacus, very good teaching tool for math. And now here is some of my Chinese section. Um, now it, it's hard to sort of divide these up because some of them are books on Chinese, some of them are books about Chinese, and some of them are Chinese books about other languages or about linguistics. Um, uh, I often like this to this Shi Yong Xing Su Zi Hui. This is uh, really nice to get different um, ideas for calligraphy. And this is the well-worn, and I've spoken about it many times on the website, the Cracking the Chinese Puzzles by TKN. This is a fantastic book. I've got the abridged edition here. Highly recommend everybody to get a copy of that if you're learning Chinese. It's um, really, really good, and it's very similar to the way my grandfather started to teach me. Um, this is a series of books. This is uh, uh, Cantonese, and there's, I've also got um, in this series uh, Shanghai uh, Chinese and several other Chinese languages slash dialects. Um, in, in essential Guide to Singlish. This is a, uh, a must-have when you're traveling through Singapore. Um, the old traditional introductory to Chinese books. Um, as I actually have a set of these from back in the 40s and I have several sets of these through the years from the um, Cultural Revolution right up until now. And it's interesting to see 
how these books have changed, but they haven't changed. The general structure pr pretty much hasn't changed at all in over um, 60 years. I have my grandfather's copies from back in the 40s and 50s. Um, then they spoke more about working in factories and so forth. Now they're pretty uh, more generic um, subjects. Uh, I have lots of books about linguistics in Chinese and Chinese linguistics. So um, a lot of these uh, are fantastic. I pick uh, a lot of my Chinese linguistic books up in uh, Mong Kok in uh, Hong Kong. And coming here we have more Chinese um, Lots of books about Cheng Yu. This is a fantastic book I found in China um, about uh, the Amis language. Actually, um, so the Amis are the native Taiwanese people, but you can see that um, once you get into it, even though it's written in Chinese, much of the um, language actually looks like the Tagalog or Malay. And surprisingly enough, I could understand a lot of what was going on there um, in the Amis language. So uh, that's uh, get, give you an idea of some of the things I like reading. Coming across to this side, going down again now. Um, and again, when learning language, it doesn't mean just uh, learning and reading books about the language, but you can learn other things through the language. So this is uh, using the abacus, the suanpan, um, but teaching you in Chinese. Uh, more books on Cantonese, on uh, Taozhou. There's more books on the abacus there. Um, here is a book in Indonesian about the 300 uh, most common Mandarin terms. And this is a, another great one, Streetwise Mandarin. Uh, Streetwise Mandarin and the Streetwise series, I've got them in several languages. They bring out everyday um, idiomatic usage of the language, which is pretty cool. Um, here I've got some more. So we have French, Dictionary of Russian Slang, uh, Teaching uh, Russian in Swedish, Italian, Turkish, um, International Airline Phrasebook, that's a bunch of languages, um, even an insult dictionary, how about that, in Scandinavian languages. Now coming down here we're getting into um, some more of the Indian, Central Asian languages. There's another Streetwise book, Streetwise Spanish. Um, we have Farsi there, Gujarati, Punjabi, Telugu, Marathi, uh, Hindi. Um, now, these are gems. I wa really want to do a series on these, but this is just an example. Um, so this is Xing Shu. So when you're writing in Chinese, you have your standard Kai Shu, which is your um, your, your normal sort of block writing, like this kind of character here. But your Xing Shu is the, the handwriting style, not so much the Tao Shu. Tao Shu is the grass writing. But this is how people write in everyday Chinese. So these are fantastic ones I, I bought from um, the Beiyu in Beijing. And what you do, it's basically samples of people's handwriting, the, the writing, it's basically Chinese running writing, Xing Shu. And it's great because you have the tracing paper here and so you can trace over it and practice getting normal handwriting. Now um, I've spoken in several posts about trying to get the language into your body uh, from the get-go. So one of the first things that I'll try and do is start in any language to analyze how native speakers write that language and here you can see this is um, just standard handwriting in Chinese. And so I'll try and go and get the rhythms of that and uh, you can use the tracing books in these kind of books. I've got a whole lot of them here. Um, so highly recommended if you're serious about getting your Chinese writing up and you won't just look like a beginner when you're writing. Um, coming down we have books on Hindi. Um, now this is a gem that I picked up in Mumbai. I love it. Uh, Urdu for pleasure and the thing I love about this is that it's got both the Urdu and the Hindi in one. Um, hours of fun there. You can see there's the Urdu uh, Karyad and here it says the same thing uh, Karyad. Um, and it's really good for doing comparatives between um, Hindi and the, the way of writing it in Urdu, also looking at the Nastalic script and being able to practice reading the Nastalic uh, script. Um, here we have Sanskrit, 
Sanskrit. Uh, there's several books on Sanskrit there. There are more Sanskrit here. Um, introductory to Sanskrit. Coming up, we've got Indonesian, uh, Chinese, Standard, Indonesian, Malay. I've been spending a lot of time in Malaysia lately and having to turn a lot of my Indonesian into N Malay. So these have been interesting. Um, it feels quite strange um, speaking Malay after speaking Indonesian for most of the time. Um, we come into my Japanese section. Now a lot of my learned Japanese books are actually in Thai. And I found, um, you can see here, so Wayakon uh, Yipun, so Japanese grammar, Pasa Yipun, Pasa Yipun. These are all um, Japanese books. Now this is a pretty cool one. This is Colloquial Kansai Japanese. Uh, you can see there, and uh, I spent quite a bit of time in Osaka many, many years ago. And I really love uh, the, the Kansai district and Osaka-ben and Kansai region and just the culture, the language. So that this book here takes you right into it. This is another great book, Japanese Verbs at a Glance uh, by Naoko Chino. And it goes in and um, demystifies a lot of verbs. And I've got another one there, The Magic of Suru. Where is it? Here it is. This many, I've had this book for probably about what, 20 odd years, but uh, that is also a very good book for people who already have a base in Chinese. Um, Suda in Japanese will open a whole new set of vocabulary up for you. Um, now we're coming up here, we've got Vietnamese, Practical Vietnamese, Roadmap to Korean, Korean. This is actually an interesting book um, that helped me a lot and I'm getting into Korean again now. It's uh, by Richard Harris and just uh, it tells you, it pre preps your mind for learning Korean um, and tells you, you know, what to expect and, and some of the the perils that await you in learning Korean. Javanese, this is a really uh, interesting, it's a cultural approach to learn Javanese. Now the only sad thing about all these Javanese books is none of them use the Javanese script, which you can see down here. I've got Javanese script just there. That's what it looks like. But none of these books use the traditional Javanese script. Um, nowadays they all use the Roman script. Um, coming up here we have uh, Filipino, now, Cambodian Burmese, let me just say, for Burmese, and I know Burmese is going to be a hit language, I was just speaking to a friend, and because what's happening politically in Burma, Burmese is becoming a very popular language to learn, but I tell you what, this book is one of the best books that I've ever found for uh, Burmese. If we have a look here, it just goes through it. Now, the only catch is that it's all in Thai, but the beautiful thing through learning Burmese in Thai is that Burmese makes a lot more sense. So I highly recommend using this uh, um, learning Burmese if you can speak Thai to learn Burmese. And I've got other um, Burmese books here, dictionaries that uh, my maids and nannies picked up for me over the years. Um, Arabic section coming here. This is actually learning Arabic through Chinese elementary Arabic and I've got a really cool book in there. I'm trying to see where it is. It's actually a comparative um, comparison of Sanskrit, uh, of Hindi, Farsi and Arabic which is very interesting looking at the you know the comparative grammars learning to write Arabic, um, learning Arabic through Thai um, and so coming down here and we get more into uh, my Thai books and my different regional dialects of Thai coming across. We go um, the hill tribe languages. We've got books here, Samnon Thai, um, learning Chinese through Thai. And um, oh, this is forbidden, Saptong Ham. So this is taboo Thai words. Um, um, so Thai that you don't learn in your normal textbooks and this is going into all the uh, the history uh, so going to the history of the Thai language I've got some other really great Thai books here um, now these books down here are uh, all from uh, Lam Kham Hang University their language series so they print them all off but they're fantastic and it's really hard normally to find these language books so let's have a look at some of these languages here um, we have Pasa Goli so learning Korean 
uh, Russian Pasatin uh, Kong Thai, so so Thai regional dialects or regional languages. Um, we've got Lao here. Um, we have Isan. So this is um, one of the few books I've been able to find actually teaching and going into the the linguistics of Isan, northeastern Thai. This is Pasat uh, Thai Tin. Um, so more about Thai regional dialects. You can see the cover here. Um, this is going into uh, northern and traditional Thai and oh here we have one in classical Tibetan that's great I went through a, a Tibetan phase recently and actually um, Donka as well so that's great to get a base in it through this classical Tibetan this is another great book because it does a whole comparative study of all the uh, scripts and how they in, in Thailand and how in Cambodia and Burma and how they all came about and then gets right into the linguistics of it so that's one of my favorite books there this is another great book for uh, Donka if you're ever going to uh, go up and uh, learn Donka this is probably one of the only books you'll find out there to teach you it's not a great learning book but you take what you can get. Somebody picked it up there for me who was doing a project on the UN. Um, and here we have more on uh, Pali, Lao, Thai for Beginners. Um, these are actually a pretty good series. This is Learning Lao, but it's, it's a series written in um, Mandarin, in Chinese. So I picked these ones up from uh, a bookstore in Beijing. You can see there. So this is learning uh, Lao through Chinese and coming, this is uh, Pali. This is a comparative, uh, this is an interesting languages and cultures of the um, uh, Kham Thai or the Zhuang Dong languages. So basically the Thai, T-A-I language comparisons from that are through China and Lao and Thailand. So you can have a look here, there you have um, the Zhuang Zhuang Bui Ningao, the Tai Tai Tong Mulam Sui, Maunan Li, Central Thai and Northeastern Thai. And it's a comparative uh, study of all of those, and it's fascinating because you can see the um, similarities, the differences where words have come in from Chinese, from ancient Chinese, middle Chinese um, and it's actually helped me a lot with uh, learning my Vietnamese so anyway that's a selection of the language books you can come over there are more books in Thai here, Thais and linguistics, the stories of English different things here, here's another one that I picked, a few that I picked up in Hong Kong from that um, Mong Kok area there are fantastic linguistic books through there and we come through here, we have more on language, culture, dot lahat. So this is more about codes and uh, electronics. But ho hopefully you can, uh, through having a look at these, get an idea of where I'm coming from, where my passion is. And um, I'm going to be taking lessons from these books in the future and bringing them to you here on video.